so uh, before we actually go to the multi mode pushover analysis let's first discuss the basic idea of what the pushover analysis is what is the non linear static procedure and once we understand that we can then proceed to multi mode pushover analysis and in that we will be discussing the modal pushover analysis uh, by the uh, different researchers have developed it originally uh, presented by chopra and goel and then it was further developed by other researchers and evaluated for other kinds of structures so let's first discuss uh, the basic idea of pushover analysis so uh, as i have discussed that the non linear analysis recommended for the first generation of performance based design uh, it was pushover analysis procedures because non linear time history analysis was not that common but currently it can be regarded as an alternate method obviously it will not be that accurate as uh, the the time history analysis uh, it has several limitations and we can discuss that in a separate session but uh, currently we will first have its basic idea and then proceed to the multi multi mode pushover analysis so the basic idea is that uh, we have a non linear multiple degree of freedom model and we we want to subject it to a ground motion in its particular direction so the rigorous non linear dynamic analysis is there already we know that that is the most accurate method but for the purpose of pushover analysis we approximately represent this situation uh, we represent the actual dynamic loading uh, which is applied to our structural model we represent it as a static loading having some pattern so these f1 to fn uh, are actually the story forces uh, which are applied to push this building in the horizontal direction and that push is not just one step method it is being pushed in a monotonic manner starting with a very small force or very low amplitude forces and keep on increasing the amplitude in a step by step manner to keep on pushing the building more and more since the building is represented here by a non linear computer model so that model itself have the capability to simulate all the inelastic actions like cracking yielding or crushing of concrete yielding of steel in compression and tension if it have shear walls they may crack in tension the rebars in them may yield in compression and tension so all those inelastic actions the computer model is able to simulate so we start this pattern start applying this pattern with a very low amplitude and then keep on increasing its amplitude and every time we apply an increment we record two things one is the base shear which is actually the sum of all the applied forces which are which are being continuously increased in a step by step manner and then the control displacement Uh, the displacement of a control node which is generally the roof point so the roof displacement represented by xr uh, is recorded every time and uh, we keep on pushing this building with more and more loading while keeping the same pattern until the building is significantly damaged which will be uh, predicted by the computer model and then at the end of this process we plot this curve between base shear on y axis and the displacement of control node which is generally the roof displacement on x axis so we will see that we will get point by point this curve and we will see that at very low levels of roof displacement or base shear the behavior of the building was almost linear but then as the structure uh, the component start getting inelastic actions like they start cracking or yielding the line deviate from the straight line and then there was a time when it is significantly damaged and then then the peak point beyond which the structure will start losing its capacity so this line may go down and the structure may ultimately fail in a complete manner so this curve which we get at the end of this process is called pushover curve right it tells us that uh, 
at what loading what was the the displacement of control node or what was the displacement of roof right and it also tells that up till which loading because vp is actually what it is the sum of all the applied loading so base shear is equal to if we take equilibrium in the horizontal direction we will see that base shear is the sum of all applied loading so this curve will tell us a lot of information like up till which loading the structure will remain linear elastic almost linear elastic and what will be the performance of building at a particular roof displacement so if we know that the future earthquake is going to uh, push our building up to this level we can directly see that what will be the condition of our structure so the program actually will push our building in a step by step manner and it will save all the results at every push it will save all the results so it's a static analysis but uh, it static analysis in a step by step manner so generally i i will give a for example some target displacement like i will say that push the building up till the roof displacement is equal to let's say 50 inches and push it in let's say 50 steps this i will define while making the load case for push over analysis so program will actually start pushing my building such that uh, in each increment it will push it 1 inches and it will complete 50 inches in 50 steps right so the number of analysis steps and up till what level i want to push my building this i will define in the start of this analysis and then program will apply it is like uh, carrying out the static analysis 50 times when i say that 50 steps is the analysis then program will carry out static analysis f is equal to ku uh, it will be solved for 50 times but the difference is unlike the linear elastic analysis where k remains constant throughout the analysis here k will not be constant k will vary k will degrade as the elements start getting yielded or they start getting cracked the k matrix will be degraded right so uh, every with every push different elements uh, they will uh, stop contributing in the k matrix because they will Uh, they will get damaged and therefore k matrix will get degraded every time there is a new push with some new damage so uh, the k matrix will be updated after every analysis step but essentially it is a static analysis procedure although uh, the computer model is non linear now this curve uh, can give us a lot of information uh, but i will not discuss in more detail here because i want to just connect it with the with the seismic analysis procedure so alone itself this curve is very useful it's like the complete life of our structure is shown here by one curve we know that at what force level uh, or at what uh, roof displacement level for example how our structure is going to to behave or respond if there is an inherent weakness in our structure or is if, if there is any design defect uh, this curve will actually highlight that one so this curve actually can give us a lot of useful information alone but uh, let's now connect it with how this curve can be used to compute seismic demands because currently up till up till this slide there is no mention of the seismic loading we are simply using a representation of seismic loading which is representing which is represented by this pattern in inverted triangular pattern in this particular figure but then it itself is a is a uh, you can say topic of research that what pattern can can better represent the seismic loading right but here i am just showing a triangular pattern so uh, currently that pattern is being applied starting from a very low amplitude and increasing it until the structure is failed so this pattern itself is not the seismic loading right 
so how we connect it with the seismic loading that uh, if we can know this number x r i n and that is the uh, let's say that we denote the uh, the peak in elastic roof displacement occurred during the ground motion as x r i n let's say that our earthquake is going to produce a roof displacement of which is denoted by x r i n in elastic roof displacement which is produced by uh, the future ground shaking the ground shaking which we want to apply or analyze our structure for so if we can get this estimate of this number then what we can do is we can simply push our building up till only this point right where our roof displacement was equal to x r i n or alternatively we can push it up till the last point but extract the responses when x r was equal to x r i n because if we are applying like uh, incremental push the program is keep on it it keep on recording all the responses for each push right so if we give 50 steps of analysis program have recorded all 50 set of results so for each push it it have all the responses like shear force bending moments displacement rotation everything so what we can do is that if we can get the, the estimate of the the roof displacement caused by future earthquake we can just extract the results of this particular point on the push over curve we can tell the program that let's say that we push it up till 50 inches so this total number up till this last point is 50 inches of roof displacement but let's say that we come to know and i'll discuss that later how we will get that number let's say we come to know that uh, the future earthquake or the earthquake for which we are analyzing our building is going to produce a displacement in my roof equal to 25 inches right so what i will do is that i will go to my analysis results and just extract the results corresponding to 25 inches point on my push over curve because program can give me all the results for each push each step of the push over analysis so the results corresponding to 25 inches are actually my seismic demands because 25 inches is the number which is going to be produced by my earthquake loading right so that's how i use the push over analysis to com approximately compute the seismic demands or seismic responses that we first determine the roof displacement produced by the future earthquake and then extract from the push over database extract all the responses corresponding to uh, that number that particular roof displacement which we calculate now the whole discussion is how to determine that number because if we can determine that roof displacement then only we can use this push over curve to compute seismic demands actually we are pushing our building applying this lateral force pattern this one and this force pattern is producing all the responses right yes but the problem is that uh, we don't know which pattern or which amplitude of loading is actually representing the seismic loading right which amplitude is actually representing the seismic loading so what we do is that we start from a very low amplitude and push our building up till very last point and then we try to estimate this number which the most likely peak in elastic roof displacement produced by the future earthquake and then come back to our push over case and push our building only up to that point or we extract the results only for that particular uh, step of analysis right so when my roof displacement was 25 inch for example the all the responses story shear moment and uh, individual component responses they now represent the responses which the future earthquake would have produced right 
so that's how we approximately determine the the seismic responses from pushover analysis without actually performing the nonlinear dynamic analysis that we perform nonlinear static analysis and then estimate the roof displacement produced by the future earthquake and then stop the analysis there or extract the responses only up till the push at that point right so now the whole discussion is that how to determine this this x r i n because the whole point of pushover analysis is now to determine this x r i n uh, the inelastic peak roof displacement produced by the ground motion because if we don't have this number then pushover curve alone cannot give us the seismic demands it can give us a lot of useful information about the structural capacity because it is a capacity curve for the whole structure it is telling us that what is the maximum base shear this building can sustain and a lot of other information but it alone this curve cannot give us uh, the the information about seismic responses what forces will be produced in different elements because uh, we don't know yet that future earthquake will push our building up till what level if we know that number x r i n uh, in elastic roof displacement produced by the ground shaking then we can again come back to push over curve and all the responses can be extracted at that particular location uh, when the push was up till this level we extract all the results and those results are uh, the the seismic demands the approximate seismic demands which the future earthquake would have produced right so that's how we use nonlinear static procedures to to estimate the approximate seismic responses so there are several methods to determine this uh, this x r i n or what we call as the target displacement sometimes this number is also represented as the target displacement x r i n uh, because uh, this is what we want to calculate first and then push our building up to this point right 